Hello everybody, my name is John Hanner. I'm with Virginia Yachts and we're doing part B of our ethanol fuel um, segment in our video sessions. I wanted to pick up on where we left off in phase separation of ethanol fuel. If we come over here to figure two, we have 60 to 90 days. This is the lifespan of ethanol blended fuel. 90 days is what the manufacturers are saying is the lifespan from date of manufacture till phase separation, which we spoke of in the earlier video, starts to occur or has already occurred. So that is our lifespan. The 60 days is something that I have picked up from one of our engine manufacturer schools that they're starting to see problems with phase separation from ethanol blended fuels at around 60 days and not getting too much into all of the problems we want to think about the 60 to 90 days lifespan of ethanol blended fuels this is very important when we come over here to filling our tank when we think of phase separation with ethanol fuel we have to think about how we're going to fill our tank because once the fuel has been separated and deteriorated we have to do a complete fuel evacuation and we do that here at Virginia Yachts it's not a inexpensive repair it's costly and we want to try to help prevent that the first thing we need to do when we're talking about this is the Coast Guard has set out a fuel uh, ratio. Um, this is a standard Coast Guard regulation. Well, it's not a regulation, it's just a recommendation. We have the one-third, one-third, one-third rule, which means that we have one-third to go out, one-third to return back to port, and one-third in reserve in case we occur a problem on the water. So an example quickly would be if we want to go 10 miles on our vessel, we want to put 10 miles worth of fuel to go out 10 miles, 10 miles worth of fuel to come back in, and 10 miles worth of fuel to come, uh, excuse me, in reserve. That's different for every vessel, and you can contact us to try to figure out what your particular boat is doing. In the same regard with that, we want to come back to not trying to fill our tank completely to the top every time. This is a recommendation, it's not a mandatory thing to do. Because we have 60 to 90 days, let's say we have a 100 gallon fuel tank, we don't want that 100 gallons of fuel to sit all season long for six months and have it deteriorate and then have to do a full evacuation. Okay, so Let's try to think about it in terms of filling up more often and not filling up quite as much. In other words, fill up what we need, use what we've needed, and then refuel as needed. Not just the mindset of let's fill the tanks completely full every time. This is a recommendation. The other thing we can do is we're using a product which is a stabilizer. Uh, we happen to have a bottle of Valve Tech, uh, it's a green bottle, ethanol rated. Any stabilizer must be ethanol rated to prevent the phase separation we spoke about earlier. And what we want to do is when we fill our tank, we want to read the instructions and fill appropriately the additional amount of stabilizer in accordance with how much fuel we put into the tank. So, I think we've covered most of the high spots on fuel separation with ethanol fuel when it's blended with gasoline. The biggest point I want to make at the end of this session is we want to try to fill up more often, we want to use stabilizer, and we want to use um, the one-third, one-third rule so we don't fill the tanks completely full every time just because we think it's necessary. If there's any questions you may have about ethanol blended fuels and the breakdown of ethanol fuels, which is called phase separation, 
Be sure to watch parts A and B of this video session and give us a call at the office or visit us at virginiayachts.com. Thank you for joining us with today's video session.